Bioactive materials. No doubt you've heard this term before. It's uh, quite a buzzword. But it's interesting to see how Pulpdent is using this term. I think it's a very honest way to use this term. Let's find out what they mean. So Larry, the Activa line is labeled as a bioactive material, but I'm also hearing you use the word biomimetic. Walk me through that. <laughs> well, in the last five years, there's been, you know, bioactivity sort of become a buzzword. Yeah. And I was looking for a better way to educate the dental pop, you know, the dental world. And, and actually, when we looked at the science of our material, it actually has a lot of mimicking effects of what goes on in the tooth, the function of the tooth, and also the ionic responses of the tooth. And so we started uh, talking more about biomimicry. And that's really, you know, we're trying to imitate nature. You know, we, we've imitated nature aesthetically with great composites and things like that, but the functionality of the tooth and, and how the tooth uh, works uh, in, in occlusion and then also ionically, how the, how the dentin wants to talk to the composite or to the adhesives. And, and so we've, uh, with these new materials, we sort of opened up communication, if you will, ionically for them to work together naturally. So I'm trying to think back to my uh, dental materials lectures in yeah. dental school. Uh, we're talking about like flexural strength and mm -hmm. other kinds of properties that can mimic the way mm -hmm. a tooth would flex. Sure. Right, and so is this similar to a dentin in those regards, enamel, both? Well, the, the term or the scientific uh, number would be the modulus of elasticity. Right. And the modulus is lower in these materials so that it can absorb and flex. And so where uh, today's composites have a higher modulus, and so the, the two, a, large, a large MOD, for example, you know, the, the four cusps are still moving, they're still functioning as they would naturally, but when you put a solid piece of composite in the middle, it's going to fight and so the margins are always going to be stressed. So we rubberized this material to give it more uh, mo a lower modulus so that it could kind of, if you will, adapt to the forces. So what does this mean for the dentist placing these restorations? What does it mean for patients? Well, what we're looking for is the long-term outcome on the margins because the number one reason for failure of any restoration is, is leakage. Yeah. And so if you can get materials that work more uh, with the tooth in terms of flexing and not stressing the bond and opening up gaps and things like that, you know, it's more synergistic. Great. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome.